Hey, hey, and welcome to another Tech Tuesday. This is Chad from Ascension Worship. This week we're doing more talk on um, post-production for your broadcast mix. Uh, Easter is this coming Sunday, and like me, you may be trying to pre-record and put out the best product possible for Easter for your church. Um, if that's new to you, there's some cool free resources out there for you. Um, Apple, along with a lot of other companies, are putting out free resources. In this case, Logic Pro X or Logic Pro 10 is available for free for 90 days while this pandemic is going on, um, which is really, really amazing. It's only $200 brand new anyway, um, but for free, that's uh, obviously an amazing deal. So one thing I want to talk to you guys about today is if you are taking your recording and you want to be able to match Logic's grid to the songs that you recorded, how to do that. Now, why would you want to do that? Uh, a few reasons. One, uh, if you're going to have any effects on there, such as uh, delays, uh, this is going to make sure that each song, your delay time is matched up to your song. Uh, two, if you're using markers, I like to go through and say, okay, here's where the chorus is. Um, here's where the bridge is, so on and so forth, because that allowed me to very easily do copy and paste. So let's say your bass player just happened to hit a bad note at the end of chorus one, but he nailed it on chorus two. Well, I can go through and something I can't do on a Easter Sunday morning, uh, but in this case, I can copy that good note and paste it over the bad note and uh, just help my friend out a little bit there. For if you want to get into this level of complexity, uh, this will allow you to do flex time, meaning that you can go into Logic and let's say your drummer was a little bit off the beat in this one section, you can actually morph his, uh, his playing to the actual perfect tempo of the song um, and again, just kind of help him out a little bit there. Now, whether or not you want to do all that is up to you, but this is how you'd be able to have those options. So over on the right, I'm going to have a list of steps. I'm going to just talk us through them real quick. I'm going to try and make this video very fast. Um, so first thing we need to do, if you haven't already, is turn on advanced tools. So I'm going to go up here to logic, preferences, advanced tools. I've already done it on my software, but if you just click enable all, that'll allow you to do some things that we're about to do in a moment here. So enable all, then you can close this window. Now, what we want to do, Logic works in musical timing, meaning that this is happening, this click track happens to be on beat one of bar one. And if I shift things, it's going to follow the musical timing because that's how you would generally use Logic. So if I start changing tempos later on, which I'm going to do, if I have any cuts, it's going to move those around because it doesn't know not to. So I'm going to lock these things to what's called Simpty time, which is just saying, lock it to you know uh seconds and hours and minutes instead of beats and bars uh, and that kind of thing so i'm going to hit command a to select all i'm going to right click and i'm going to go to um simply lock and click lock you get this cute little lock symbol on your regions and now if you try and move those left or right they will not move because they are locked to the actual time of your session so now that we've done that, we're going to do something called beat mapping. So up here where it says marker, I'm going to right click beat mapping and I'm going to select my click file. Notice I put it at the top of my session here and um, by clicking the name, it's selecting all the regions. So this band happened to do three takes. So it's like all three regions. Uh, up here where it says beat mapping, I'm gonna click and go to analyze transients. Uh, now I've already done that on this session, so I'm gonna hit cancel, but for you, you can hit okay, and then you just need to wait a little while while it does all the analysis. Now you'll notice over here, it has taken every time it sees a transient, so a spike in audio, and it has put a little blue tick on there. So this is listening to the click track that the band record to. For this to work, your band really needs to record to a click track. You can do it, manually, but it would probably not be worth the amount of time you'd spend trying to do with that. Um, so having a click track on there is going to make this way, way easier for you. So what I'm going to do is if I notice on here, the song right now, which is set to 120 beats per minute, because that's just the default, um, 
the first uh, beat of our click happens to land very close to measure 20. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do what I call setting a BPM anchor. BPM stands for beats per minute. That's how logic is, is handling all this. Um, so at measure 19 bar one, I'm just gonna click here and it's just creating a little beat map moment on there. I'm then gonna move my playhead right on to measure 19. And to create an anchor, I'm gonna go to my list, which is this first button right here, into my tempo list, and I'm gonna click the plus sign. So that is said that at measure 19, there's gonna be some sort of tempo change, which happens to be 120 right now. So I'm gonna close this just for now. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab beat 20 and I'm gonna pull it towards this first little blue tick here. So click and drag. And now if I look back at my list, this said 120 moment ago, now it says 135.3192, very specific. And if you notice, it looked like the audio moved. Now the audio did not move in time. Instead, logic will always visually make a measure the same physical length when you're looking at the screen. So instead of speeding up and making this harder to read, what it's done instead is it's made the visual of the audio look like it's gone later on in time. Because we simply locked everything, the timing did not move. It's just our perception of it. So a little bit confusing, but you just need to trust me here. So now the, um, the timing is shifted so that beat one lands on beat one of measure 20. So I'm gonna put another anchor at measure 20. So again, I'm gonna to go to my list and click this plus sign. Now the actual tempo of this song, let's go ahead and find that. So to do that, I'm going to put a BPM meter on here. So um, over on the far left-hand side, you've got your channel strip, audio effects, metering, BPM counter. I'm just gonna hit play, let me, yep. Bridge, two, three, four. So we're more or less at 110. Um, so on this beat anchor that we just made here, I'm gonna change this from 135 to 110. Close this for now. And you'll notice that now everything is lining up with the grid. So I'm gonna play that again and watch this uh, this counter up here, it'll line up. Bridge, two, three, four. Cool, so we're lined up with the grid now. Uh, now sometimes, depending on what your click is, this might change over time, so you might need to do uh, an anchor point at the end of the song or you know throughout the song, but this one's pretty close. If we go to the end of the song, you can see, oops, so here's where they stopped playing. And you can see. Sorry, I was in the wrong song. I was gonna say that didn't look right. So you can see we are still lined up with the grid more or less. It's a little bit off, but not enough to be an issue for what I'm doing today. Now, if you are gonna do flex time, you might wanna get that perfect, but for now it's perfect. Uh, for what our, my, our needs are. Now, they paused for a little while and they started playing the new track over here. Um, let's see if that's a different tempo. Intro. All right, so this one's at 72 beats per minute and there's an eighth note in there, um, eighth note click. So same deal. We can see that this first beat lies very close to measure 143. So at measure 142, I'm gonna put an anchor. So again, I'm gonna select the measure. I'm gonna go to my tempo list and put a plus sign there. And then we're gonna grab uh, beat one of measure 143, drag it over and let go. And what has happened here is we've uh, slowed down so that we can get to this tempo. So 143, again, I'm gonna put another beat anchor and what was that tempo? 72. So we'll change this to 72 beats per minute. And we're all lined up. Intro, two, three, four. Let's check the end of the song.
Yep. Still good. All right. And that is how you line up your grid and logic uh, to your audio. So now you can make your cuts and move things around and everything's going to line up. It's going to change at those points that we set up there. So just do that for each song and that's it. Hope this has been helpful for you. And uh, I hope you guys have a fantastic Easter uh, and that all this, if it's new to you, goes well. If you need help with anything, um, like actual mixing and mastering services, um, that is something that we offer as well. If you have questions about that, please feel free just to email me at techtuesday at ascensionworship.com. If you have general questions or suggestions related to this video or other things broadcast related, you can leave those in our comment section below on YouTube. We look forward to hearing back from you. Um, guys, have a great Easter. Stay safe. And uh, until next time, have a great week. Again, this is Chad from Ascension Worship. I hope this has been helpful for you and your team. Come back here every Tuesday for new information.